Yes, deer and elk heart can be canned. It can be pickled and it can be canned using a water bath canner. It does not have to be pressure cooked. We are literally pickling our elk and deer heart. So you need to understand vinegar is the most important piece of this puzzle for it to work in this water bath canner. The basics of pickling are use vinegar. Vinegar is the acid that kills the bacteria in your jar and makes it so it stays shelf stable. Vinegar is at a 2.5 pH acidic level. I will show you the recipe that I use and I'll calculate the level of acidic pH by the time it's done. I have one heart here that's been cleaned. I've taken all of the silver skin off of it. I also have some bell peppers that we're gonna be incorporating. We're gonna use diced onion, water, obviously vinegar, the star of the show, cloves, bay leaves, and here's um, mustard seed. Mustard seed will be in this as well. So starting with a heart that's been cleaned, with all of the silver skin taken off on the outside and all of the tendons on the inside removed, you're gonna boil the heart until it's tender. So just cover it with enough water to get it to boil and make sure that it boils until the entire meat is cooked through. Be sure to keep the broth after you've boiled the heart so that you can use that in the recipe for pickling. For pickling this size of elk heart, I'm going to use four cups of water I want to make sure to boil this completely, make sure that my elk heart is 100% cooked. So you wanna make sure that your water level goes over the entire top of the meat as it's boiling and let it boil until that meat is cooked all the way through. When your meat comes to a full boil, turn your heat down to keep it boiling until it is cooked. We'll be adding all of our spices in so that it incorporates and it boils together all of those delicious flavors. One of the most common things that you'll see in pickled recipes is salt. Salt is actually neutral. It will not increase the pH of your vinegar, but it does add the flavor. It really enhances the taste of the meat. So I use a tablespoon of salt and we'll put that in with our meat as it's boiling. This recipe also uses a half a teaspoon of mustard seed, a half a teaspoon of ground clove, or you can use two teaspoons of whole cloves. Pepper, we'll be using a half a teaspoon of pepper. Make sure to remove your bay leaf when you are done boiling the meat so that it doesn't end up in your pickled jars. You can give that a stir and roll. If you have large pieces of meat, roll them over to make sure that if there's a piece that's floating that it gets fully submerged in that boiling water and thoroughly cooked. Diced onions and bell peppers add color and flavor to this amazing recipe. So our meat is cooked all the way through. I'm gonna remove it from the boiling water and I wanna keep, oh, there's my bay leaf, that's perfect. I wanna keep at least two cups of this broth to add in with the vinegar for pickling. All right, so take two cups of the broth. I don't strain it, I like the little bits of mustard seed and everything that is in it to stay and it adds flavor to my pickled jars. And then four cups of the white distilled vinegar and all of your other ingredients, the heart. So here goes in the heart and the bell pepper and then our onion. And you're going to boil this for another 30 minutes to incorporate everything together. The heart and vegetables have finished simmering for a half an hour and I'm gonna put them in my jars. This is a pint jar and I like to use pint jars for my pickle recipes. It makes it nice for our family to have the right serving size. To fill these, a really great trick is to use a canning jar funnel. It protects the rim from getting pieces of your product on the jar and it'll help keep your seals from failing. If you get juice or any particles on the rim of the jar, it can cause those seals not to adhere correctly and not to be able to create a full complete barrier. So I like to use a large ladle so that I can get as much of the juice and the vegetables and meat together at one time and fill my jars. This is very warm so I do it quickly. The filling is very hot. It's almost boiling because it just came off the stove. 
I want to make sure to leave an inch of head space, which is the amount of air between the top of the seal and the liquid that's inside or the filling inside of the jar. I leave an inch of head space to make sure my jar will seal correctly. Once you have them filled, you can wipe off the top rim of the jar. I use a paper towel and make sure that it is perfectly nice and clean and dry. I've been simmering a little water on the stove with my lids and seals, my rings and seals in it. I like to simmer that and get it nice and hot in that water and then I put the lids and seals in so that they are nice and soft and the rubber is ready to adhere and seal to the top of the jar. And so I'll take my hot seals, put them on top of the jars, which are very, very warm. And I'm gonna show you this seal that I just found as I was pulling it out of my water. And this one would be a seal that I would not want to use because if you look at it, the rim of it has been dented right out of the box. So be careful, make sure you check your seals, make sure that they aren't dented or flat on any of the edges that the rubber looks just right and is ready to use. Otherwise this seal, this would have failed. So I'm gonna set that one off to the side and use a different one. I put a couple extras in just to make sure that I had several. And again, I'm checking that seal, making sure it looks just right. And this one again too, probably won't seal. I'm gonna make sure that I get a different one now. But if you look really, really careful, there's an indent right there in the rubber that goes all the way to the metal. And that probably would cause an air gap and not allow that seal to stay sealed if it even did seal all right away. Okay, now that you have your seals and rings finger tight on top of your jars, I use a rack to lower my jars into my water bath. Um, I'm going to start heating. My water right now is just room temperature. You don't want to put your water, your jars into really hot water because if the jar itself isn't warmed up and you put it into the really hot water, it can pop your jar and crack your jar. And then, but um, if you take your handles and slowly, carefully lower it in until it sits on the bottom, make sure that the water actually is covering above the top of the seals. And I'll show you that this is just not quite deep enough water. So I'm going to fill my water bath just a little bit more to make sure that those seals are completely submerged. This is a large bath canner and you can fit a lot more jars in here than this, but even a, a small batch like three still works great. I filled it up a little bit more and you can see that all of my seals are submerged under the water and they just have to be under the water level line. I like to put them at least a half an inch or so below so that I can make sure that throughout that boiling, it doesn't evaporate away and end up with the seals out and exposed out of the water. The jars are completely done processing and I'm about to take them out. They're still extremely hot. I press in the center of the seal and if it wiggles or moves or presses down in, then the seal did not completely adhere and it was not successful. And this one for sure is solid. There's no pop sound that it'll make, it'll go pop. That one as well, and that one as well. All three of those sealed wonderfully. Okay, so these jars sealed, they look wonderful. If you look at the inside, they have a beautiful color. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take and open one of my jars that just sealed. So, yep, I'm popping that seal right after it's been canned. And I'm going to test the acidity of our pickle. I'm going to try it in and see what the acidic level is in our jar of pickles. 2.5, a little bit higher than 2.5, which is mostly a vinegar acidic level is 2.5. So that has the right acidic level to be able to can as a water bath can and keep on your shelf and stay stable for quite a while as a pickle. There you go. Our jars were pickled successfully. I'm excited to try this. I can't wait. It smells so good. I can't wait to see if it tastes amazing. Here it goes. Mm. Mm. 
wonderful. What a great way to make heart. And my family absolutely loves this. This is a wonderful snack that they love to take in their lunch or eat on crackers after school. Thanks for joining me today. I love having the chance to share these awesome little tips and tricks with you and the table fair that we enjoy. Come back again, like, subscribe, hit the bell to turn on your notifications and never miss another upload. You can also find other great recipes for heart and other wild game at these other locations. If you liked this video, comment down below and I look forward to seeing you next time on our Western Family Living channel.